now, once again, Raymond Arroyo. Welcome back to The World Over. There is a debate that has been raging apparently for some time in and outside of the Catholic Church about whether anyone is actually in hell. Ralph Martin, author of Will Many Be Saved, has been at the center of that debate. Tonight he addresses the controversy and talks about the upcoming Synod on the Family and more. Here's EWTN favorite and theologian, Ralph Martin. Ralph, I want to start with uh, your book, Will Many Be Saved?, and the more popular version, The Urgency of the New Evangelization, Answering the Call. In it, you talk about an atmosphere of universalism in the church and how this could be a danger and imperil the new evangelization. What do you mean by that? Does you know, it mean our teachings are too universal? No, no. I mean, God really wants the whole human race to be saved. You know, okay. the, the Catholic Church teaches that, Scripture teaches that, 1 Timothy chapter 2. God wills the whole human race to be saved and come to a knowledge of the truth. Mm -hmm. But if I were to describe how many of our fellow Catholics look at the world today, I'd describe it like this. Mm -hmm. Broad and wide is the way that leads to heaven, and almost everybody's going that way. Uh -huh. Narrow that door that's leading to hell, and hardly anybody's going that way. Hmm. Now, Raymond, you know, what, what's wrong with this picture? Uh, well, there's a lot wrong with yeah, it. It doesn't yeah. square with tradition, yeah. scripture. I mean, we'll, yeah, we'll get into in a minute. Yeah, it's just the opposite of what Jesus says. You know, what does Jesus say? Matthew chapter 7. Broad and wide is the way that leads to destruction. Many are traveling that mm -hmm. way. Narrow is the door that leads to life. Hard, hard is the road, and few there are who are finding it. Now, few there are who are finding it. And the Lord doesn't want it to be like that. You know, mm -hmm. Jesus was weeping over his city when he saw mm -hmm. his own people not receiving him. So God's doing, God's dying to bring people to salvation, mm -hmm. but people have to say yes. You know, God, God's showing mercy to everybody, but there has to be a, a yes to that mercy. So you think there might be a misunderstanding of what mercy is? Yeah. At this point. Yeah. The, the Catechism of the Catholic Church says God is merciful. But if people close their hearts to that mercy, they're, they're closing themselves off from salvation. Mm -hmm. St. Faustina, Jesus says the same thing to St. Faustina. And he warns her, he says, you know, I tell people about my mercy because they'll perish if they don't respond to my mercy. You know, mm -hmm. many, many times in, in the revelations of St. Faustina, he says, people need to respond to my mercy, and they're perishing because they're not responding. I want you to forecast a little bit this Synod on the Family coming up. You watched attentively the conversations last year. The Synod Fathers gathered. There was a lot of chatter, as there is once again, that the church is about to change, if not its doctrine, which they keep saying, at least the pastoral approach to divorce and remarried Catholics and possibly the discipline of communion. Yeah. Is that part of the problem you're talking about? Well, I, th I, I think it's related to it because if you don't really believe that scripture and tradition and the magisterium are reliably passing on the truth to us, mm. you're going to play a little loose with it. You know, like uh, maybe this is just, you know, suggestions for the first century or, or you know, maybe we didn't really understand human nature 400 years ago. And, and I think Archbishop Kurtz, who's leading the American delegation to the Synod, mm -hmm gave a tremendous talk where he said, you can't separate pastoral practice from the truth. The truth has to inform pastoral practice. So I feel like there's just going to be a lot of cardinals and bishops there who have a really firm grasp on teaching that can't be changed because yeah. it comes from Christ. And yet, you were at a conference in Georgetown uh, just a few weeks ago, and uh, Cardinal Casper appeared there, who has really been on a global tour, it's almost like a salesman going door to door, you know, making it, it's a PR campaign. We have to just say what it is yeah. to kind of sell this idea that to be merciful, you've got to change this pastoral practice of communion and granting communion and quick readmission to the church to divorced and remarried Catholics. That does sound nice. It is welcoming. Uh, but when you have thousands of priests now signing petitions, begging the church fathers to adhere to church teaching in this synod. That's a reason for concern, isn't it? Oh, yeah, it, re it really is. I mean, like, I, I've never seen in my lifetime, I mean, cardinals fighting with each other like there is. It's in a, public. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's really pretty serious. So there is a battle going on. But I also know that some of the finest and, and 
most solid and most intellectual cardinals in the world are very concerned about this, and they're going to really fight hard to, to make sure that those undermining the church's teaching aren't going to be able to do it. Mm. No, we'll see what happens. I mean, ultimately, <laughs> yeah. this is the Holy Father's call at yeah. the end of the day. Yeah. I mean, it's nice he's consulting with everybody. He wants to be collegial, but we'll see where he lands on this, and, yeah. and uh, yeah. stay tuned. Um, let's talk about this, and you alluded to it earlier. There is a internal conversation happening within the church that, frankly, I was sort of unaware of. I just wasn't paying attention. Uh, I, I'm going to play a bite. This is Father Robert Barron, mm -hmm. uh, someone many of our viewers are familiar with. Uh, I want to play this and uh, get into a conversation of what the implications of this mm -hmm. thought might be. Roll that. Are any human beings in hell? We don't know. We don't know. The church has never declared on that subject. And, and, we may pray that all be saved and may even reasonably hope that all people will be saved. If anyone's in hell, he or she has sent himself or sent herself there and now has locked the door. I've used the image before of, of heavens like this great party. It's a share of the divine life. Everyone's invited. Hell would be the state of that person who has slunk into the corner and refuse to join the party, has locked himself into this dark and sad and lonely place. Not so much sent there by an avenging God. Your reaction to this idea that hell is basically empty. Yeah, well, like, like many people, Raymond, I, I have the greatest respect for Father Barron. I think he's doing a fabulous job in trying to relate to modern culture. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, on this one point, we really do have a disagreement because he, he claims that Balthazar's position on this is really the, the, the way to go. And what Balthazar ends up going is saying is that it's infinitely improbable that anybody will ever reject the mercy of God. And that just doesn't square. With, with Jesus' yeah. tremendous concern well, about people. Well, Fa Father Barron had that line early on. The church never declares on the subject of whether human beings are in hell. Is that true? It, well, well, it is true. I mean, we, we canonize saints, but we don't make a judgment about who's in hell, but we actually pass on faithfully all of Jesus' warnings about if you don't repent from serious sin, it, mm -hmm. you know, you're very likely to go to hell. And mm -hmm. that's what the Catechism of the Catholic Church says, that yeah. people who die in serious but, sin and, yeah, and I, don't, I, don't repent are are a grave danger. Look, of, I, I, you're, you're no fear of being outclassed here as a, by a fellow theologian, because I'm not. Um, but when I heard that, when I hear this idea, there is the line in Scripture, your salvation will be worked out in fear and trembling. Why fear and tremble if there's this infinite pool of mercy? The Protestants got it right. The blood of Christ washes all, and then I'm free to go golf on Sundays. Yeah, well, the, the trouble is people are drifting into a presumption that because God is so merciful, he'll never let anybody be lost. But that's not what he says. And so on the day of judgment, when we appear before his judgment seat, and we're going to say, Lord, you're so merciful, you won't let anybody be lost. He says, didn't you pay attention to what I said, you know? Mm -hmm that you need to respond. I'm knocking at the door of your heart, but you need to open the door. You really need to admit that you need forgiveness for your sins. You really need to know, admit that you're, you need mercy and, and that you can't save yourself. Hmm. Now, this is fascinating. And, and it's not just Father Barron. There's a whole group yeah, of people yeah. who are sort of lined up on this side of the yeah, question. Yeah, I, I don't want to do any disservice to Father Barron. I'm sure he's very nuanced in what he's saying, but I think the net effect for people is to drift into a presumption that everybody's going to be saved, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. And I think that not only undermines evangelization, because why bother? Well, that's my point. Let's yeah. join me in, on the golf greens. Yeah, why bother? I think it undermines holiness, and I think it takes away motivation for vocation. So I think well, what about penance? Why do you have to do, why, why confess anything? Yeah. Because it's all done, right? Yeah, I think it's a very serious issue. That's why I did my doctorate on this issue. That's why I wrote the book, Will Many Be Saved? That's why I did the urgency of the new evangelization. I, I just really feel like this is a really important issue that we get clear on, that we neglect the explicit teaching of Jesus at our great peril. Uh, I want to talk about the upcoming encyclical. The Holy Father has an eco encyclical coming out that will touch on climate change. He's already uh, announced, along with Ban Ki-moon and the UN, that it is a human-derived phenomenon. Your concern about using papal capital, if you will, to endorse science that may or may not be credible at the moment. 
Well, I think we just have to honestly, Raymond, wait and see what happens. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's rumors about what the encyclical is going to say. Let, let's let's wait and see what happens. You know, uh, mm -hmm. now an encyclical is a very high level of papal teaching. You know, it, it, it is a very authoritative. Is it a magisterial <clears throat> teaching? Well, it is definitely a magisterial teaching, but it depends. Not every part of an encyclical has the same authority. Mm -hmm. Not every part of an encyclical is intending to teach in an authoritative way. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's you know, making suggestions, sometimes it's making comments, sometimes it's doing social analysis and it's not invoking that level of authority on the social analysis. Yeah. So we're just gonna have to wait and see yeah. what this encyclical actually says and, and But it's not dogmatic. Well, well, it's, it, it's to be observed, but it's not a dogmatic teaching that everyone it's, must It's not a believe. formal declaration of dogma, but it, it, it could offer a very high level of, of, of teaching. And we're just gonna have to see about that. Until next week, the show continues on Facebook and Twitter. Like me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter at Raymond Arroyo. The links are at RaymondArroyo.com. And tell me what you thought of tonight's show. Don't miss next week, an exclusive interview with Cardinal Walter Casper, the man at the center of the Synod on the Family and so much of the discussion surrounding it. You will not want to miss this. And Father Cashin Folsom, prior of the Monks of Norsha, will also join me to talk about the Monks' new chant CD on DECA.